In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about baby led weaning, from knowing when they're ready, to knowing which foods to feed them and how to prepare them, to when you should start and what you should do about milk. By the end of this video, you will have all the information that you need to get started with weaning your baby. Simply put, baby led weaning just means starting your child on solid finger foods as opposed to giving them purees or things like baby rice or porridge. It's all about the fun factor and it shouldn't be a replacement for milk. In fact, with baby led weaning, your baby's milk intake will stay the same and you will not alter it, but instead they will just be learning about the joy of food. There's a saying in the baby led weaning community that food before one is just for fun and that's certainly what baby led weaning is all about. It's about letting your baby explore the textures, the smells, the feel, the taste of the food, but not expecting them necessarily to eat a great deal of it. In fact, you probably won't find until about 10 months old that your baby eats a huge amount of food. Throughout this period, you will actually keep their milk intake exactly the same. You won't change their milk schedule at all because the food is not supposed to replace the milk. You will, however, notice that once your baby reaches around about that 10 month mark and they start eating more of the food, that they will decrease their milk intake naturally and we'll get into that a little bit more later on in the video. People commonly ask how do you know when your baby is ready to start weaning onto solid food and of course by solid food I mean proper solid finger foods and not purees and porridges because some people start those things from around four months old but baby led weaning can only be started from six months old. Before six months your baby's digestive tract is simply not mature enough to enable them to eat solid foods and not to get sick. Things that you should look out for in your baby are the fact that they are sitting up independently. This means that they can sit up without anything supporting them and without you holding them. They really need to have that core strength strength and stability to be able to sit up unaided because of course you don't want a slouched over baby when they're eating so they need to be able to hold their posture to allow the food to pass through their system and to prevent choking. You should also look for whether your baby is able to pick up things in their hands and bring them to their mouth. So from around about five months old your baby should start grasping at objects and being quite strong with them but they do need to be able to grasp and bring them to their mouth as well because obviously that's what they're doing with the food. The other thing that you need to look out for is whether your baby shows an interest in food. Do they watch you while they're eating? Do they do kind of a chewing motion with their mouth as they watch you eat? Do they try and grab for things on your plate as you're eating? So all of those things together build the picture that your baby is ready. The fact that your baby seems interested in food or the fact that your baby can pick things up and bring them to their mouth means nothing unless all of those things are in place and most importantly they can sit up unaided and they are six months old plus. If your baby doesn't have teeth at six months that is absolutely fine. Finley didn't actually get his first tooth until he was nine months old. He was a very late starter. Baby's gums are actually very very hard and their jaws are very strong so they will be able to munch and chew on food without an issue. So before you start weaning with your baby, you will need to get prepared and buy a few things to help you on your journey. If you want to know more about the tools that I would recommend and the things that you need to start baby led weaning, then check out my video here that I filmed last week all about my recommended products for weaning. I also have all the recommended products linked in my Amazon store and there is a link to that down below. It can be hard to know what to expect when you're doing baby led weaning when you've never done it before and a lot of parents worry about things like choking and we'll get onto that in just a minute but before we do we're going to talk about the types of food that you should be feeding feeding your baby. The beauty of baby led weaning is that your baby can eat pretty much anything that you're eating so you don't need to prepare special food for them. In lots of cultures it's very normal for your baby to just eat what you're eating. We've got a strange phenomenon in the UK and the US and a lot of other westernized countries that babies should be eating baby food, pureed food that to be honest doesn't taste very good and certainly doesn't smell very good. I'm a firm believer that if you wouldn't eat it, then you wouldn't really want to feed it to your baby. So actually, 
your babies by doing baby led weaning are experiencing the joy of food and the joy of different flavors. So that brings me on to flavoring your food. If you have prepared a meal, your baby can eat and enjoy it with a few little exceptions and I'll get onto those in just a second. But if you're using herbs and spices, you can use those in your baby's food. Finley actually really used to love food that had been flavoured with chilli powder. Babies don't need things to be bland and boring. They actually love flavour if they're given the opportunity to try. The exceptions to this are salt and sugar. You need to be really careful with excess salt and sugar with your baby. So if you are adding those things to your food, then you need to take a little portion out for your baby before you season it with salt or before you add any sugar if it's that kind of a meal. You should also make sure that you do not give your baby honey. Honey actually contains botulism spores and they can poison your baby, make them very ill and actually kill them in extreme cases. So you really want to avoid honey at all costs until they're one year old and their digestive system is mature enough to handle it. The same with cow's milk. Now cow's milk isn't poisonous to most babies unless they have a cow's milk allergy like my little boy does, but cow's milk doesn't have any of the nutrition in it that babies need before they turn one. So from a milk point of view, they shouldn't be drinking any cow's milk. They should still be drinking either breast milk or formula. I am actually going to be making a new video coming up very soon on all of our favorite foods that we fed Finley when he was baby led weaning. So if you would like to watch that, then make sure that you are subscribed and you click the notification bell. Let's talk about what to expect when you are doing weaning with your baby. When you first start weaning, and especially in those first few weeks and months, your baby probably won't actually eat very much at all. They will enjoy playing with the food that you give them. They will be using their hands to feel the textures and smush things between their fingers. They will probably be bringing things to their mouth and testing them and tasting them, but they might not be eating them. So they might lick them. You might see them put it in their mouth and take it out again. It's actually quite funny to watch their facial expressions. Babies often pull quite a disgusted looking face when they're putting new things in their mouths. It doesn't mean that they don't like it, it just means that it's a new flavour that they've not tried before. So if your baby pulls a disgusted looking expression when you give them something for the first time, don't wrongly assume that it means that they don't like it and then don't give it to them again. They do like it, they just need time to learn. It's actually been scientifically proven that babies need to try something on average at 20 21 times before they know whether they like it or not. So that just gives you an idea of how many times you need to introduce certain foods and flavours to your baby before they can decide whether they actually do like it and want to eat it. As well as the fact that they probably won't eat very much, you will notice a lot of that food ends up on the floor or on their high chair tray or in their bib. And that's why it's important to get the right tools unless you want to have a complete mess on the floor, which if you do, then that is absolutely fine. It can be a little bit frustrating watching your baby drop so much or watching your baby not put something in their mouth straight away when all you want to do is for them to try it and taste it and enjoy the food. But it is really, really important that you do not put any food in their mouth for them because this can actually create a choking hazard. Babies are really, really good at not choking. They're actually designed to not choke. But if you put food into your baby's mouth for them, that disables that reflex that babies naturally have in them to not choke on food. A lot of people worry about choking with baby led weaning, but actually it's not been proven that your baby is any more likely to choke doing baby led weaning than if they were doing traditional weaning with purees. Babies have a really active gag reflex and it's quite far forwards in their mouth. And and that means that when they put something in their mouth, whether it's food or a toy, they will gag and this is actually a natural reflex to stop them from choking. It is very rare for babies to choke when baby led weaning, but you of course need to be aware of the things that you should watch for and you should never ever leave your baby unsupervised at all when they're eating food. Don't leave the room even for a second, make sure that you're sitting by their side at all times. I would really advise if you haven't already, having a look at some baby first aid videos or even taking an online baby first aid course to to equip you with the skills that you need if your baby does start to choke. I will put some links to some really good videos down below to teach you how to do that. The main things to look out for are the fact that your baby is silent, the fact that your baby is possibly blue, 
and the fact that your baby would have a look of terror on their face. Those three things are the main things to look out for with choking. If your baby is spluttering, making loud gagging sounds or red in the face, then they're not choking, they are gagging and there's a big difference between those two. Gagging is a really, really normal thing that happens with baby led weaning and I absolutely have lost count of the amount of times that I watched Finley gag on a piece of food. You really have to sit on your hands and watch them because if you jump in to help or you reach to maybe grab a piece of food out of their mouth when they're gagging, that could actually push the food into their mouth further and cause them to choke. You have to remember that gagging is a natural reflex and it's what your babies do if the food has gone a little bit too far back in their mouth before they're expecting to swallow, then gagging naturally pushes pushes that food forwards in their mouth and stops them from choking. It can be a little bit scary and sometimes you especially have to educate others around you, especially carers and grandparents, not to jump in to a baby's aid if they're gagging, you sit on your hands, you wait, you watch. If you see any of the signs of choking, of course you immediately spring into action. But remember that it's very, very unlikely, as long as you're supervising your baby, as long as you're preparing and giving foods in the correct way, and I'll talk about that in a second, then it is very, very unlikely that your baby will choke. There are a few hard and fast rules that you should stick to when preparing finger foods and food for your baby to eat when your baby led weaning. The main rule of thumb is that if it's anything remotely solid in texture, that it should be a long, thin strip. Think like a finger. That's the kind of size and shape that you want to give your baby when they're eating food. It's easy for them to grab onto with their full fist like this, and they are unlikely to choke on it. And if they do, the pieces that they break off will be small enough to slip easily down their throat. If you are feeding things like meats, then make sure that you give them big amounts. So you could even give like a whole chicken drumstick and we used to give that to Finley sometimes. Just a big piece of meat. They're, before they get teeth, they're not likely to be able to break parts off themselves. They will most likely just suck and gnaw on it. But make sure that you give a big piece rather than little pieces because that reduces the choking hazard. Any soft or mushy food like yogurt or spaghetti bolognese can be served as is and you can give your baby a spoon to use to feed themselves and what you can actually do is preload the spoon so that means scoop some onto the spoon yourself and then you can hand the spoon to your baby and they can bring it to their mouths themselves. When your baby reaches around the nine month mark then they will start developing that pincer grasp so that's using their thumb and forefinger to pick things up and that's when they will be more able to eat things like cut up grey or peas or little bits of cereal. So before they reach around nine months old, you need to stick to bigger things that they can use that full fist for. But once they get a little bit older, then smaller items will work really well as well. It doesn't mean, however, that you shouldn't introduce those things before nine months. Just be aware that it might be a little bit tricky for them to pick them up. If you are worried about how to prepare your baby's food or you want to know more, then make sure that you are subscribed because I have a video coming out very soon on how to prepare the most common foods that you are likely to be feeding your baby. So you are ready to start baby led weaning and now all you need to know is how often should you be feeding meals to your baby and what should you do about milk? Well, as I said at the beginning of the video, the milk consumption shouldn't change. You will notice that as your baby gets a little bit older and they start to eat more food, that they will naturally decrease the amount of milk that they take and they may well drop a feed or two. But that's not something that you should initiate. You should watch your baby, watch for their cues and it should be very much a baby led thing so they will lead and decide when they drop those milk feeds. Start off by giving one meal a day to your baby. It can be breakfast or lunch or dinner. It's entirely up to you. We used to do either breakfast or lunch depending on what we were doing for that day. It really doesn't matter though and you can do whatever fits in best with your lifestyle. From around nine or ten months is when your baby will start to eat the food that you give them rather than just play, taste, experiment and often spit out again. So at that point you 
you may want to increase the meals from just once a day to two or three times a day. You can even start giving morning and afternoon snacks if you feel that your baby needs and wants them. Make sure that you offer water with every meal. It doesn't matter whether your babies actually drink the water and often they won't, but they may just taste and spit it out. But it's important to build it into their routine so they understand and know to expect water with every meal. And it also will help a little bit with constipation as your baby starts to eat more and more solids. The water, however, should not replace the milk. You can give bottled water or tap water as long as the tap water where you live is safe to drink. If you would like to read more about baby load weaning, then I will link some of my favourite articles down in the description below for you. If you have any further questions, if there's anything that I didn't answer that you would like to know about still, then do leave me a comment below and let me know, or you can send me a DM, as always, on Facebook or Instagram. To find out about all the tools and equipment that you need to start weaning, then click this video here or if you've already seen it then click on this video down here. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos including my live baby classes which happen every Wednesday here on YouTube and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye.